to the flooding disaster. As seen as Miguel Marquez is joining us right now. Miguel, what, about half of the confirmed deaths are in New Jersey, where you are tonight. What's the latest? Yeah, it is just incredible how much water was dumped in this area and that power of water. I'm going to show you what we're looking right at right now. This is the Raritan River near New Brunswick. This was a park right in front of us beyond the river. It's about 10 to 12 feet over flood stage. It has started to come down ever so slightly. We're just past high tide here, but these rescue workers here have a long way to go. Raging floodwaters flowing across parts of the Northeast tonight where active rescues continue in the wake of Ida. In Pennsylvania, officials estimate they've received calls in the thousands from people needing to be rescued from extreme flooding. The water was raising so high I couldn't run straight to the street. I had to run up the fire escape. I winded up on a roof where they had to get a boat to rescue me. In New Jersey, rescue crews using boats to help people to safety. In the northern part of the state, floodwaters left trains in Boundbrook submerged and a nearby stadium filled with water. Nearly 30 miles northwest of there in Elizabeth, at least four people drowned in an apartment complex. Officials say the victims all lived in garden-level apartments next to the Elizabeth River, which rose more than eight feet at its peak last night. Meanwhile, more than 90 miles away in Mullica Hill, at least 25 homes were destroyed or badly damaged by a tornado. This was the scene in many New York City subway stations last night caused by gushing floodwaters. Unprecedented is almost an understatement. This is you know, the first time ever we've had a flash flood emergency declared. Across the Northeast, the death toll continues to rise. Among the victims, a two-year-old. This has been uh, a biblical storm by, by every means. In Queens, the New York Police Department commissioner says at least eight people died in the basements of homes inundated with water. The roads everywhere I saw coming out of the airport and beyond flooded. Uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of cars marooned, stranded. Across the Big Apple, first responders rescued hundreds from submerged cars, including commuters stuck in stopped subway trains. Uh, roughly between somewhere between 15 and 20 trains did get stranded and folks needed to be rescued. New York Governor Kathy Hochul says it's still not clear whether this catastrophic flooding could have been predicted. I know I deployed resources yesterday morning. But we did not know that between 8.50 and 9.50 p.m. last night that the heavens would literally open up and bring Niagara Falls level water to the streets of New York. Could that have been anticipated? I want to find out. In Central Park, 5.2 inches of water fell in just three hours, a one in 500 year rainfall event. My message to everyone affected is we're all in this together. The nation is here to help. And help is something that will be needed, with officials warning things will only get worse because of climate change. We are in a whole new world now, and this is a reality we have to face. So what you are looking at now are submerged cars on uh, South 18, uh, Route 18, or Memorial Parkway here in New Brunswick. You can see just how much water there still is. It has started to come down ever so slightly but there is still a massive amount of water here. It is incredible how much water Ida dropped, not only here, but from Louisiana all the way here, packing a nationwide punch. Wolf? Yeah, it's amazing, those uh, pictures. Uh, awful situation indeed, Miguel. Thank you very much for that report. Uh, let's go to Philadelphia right now, where at least 100 people have been rescued from these floodwaters. CNN's Pete Montin is on the scene there for us. Pete, so what are you seeing on the ground tonight? Well, Wolf, this is the Vine Street Expressway. Interstate 676 cuts right through the heart of Philadelphia. I was up on that overpass at the top of last hour. Now we have moved to an off-ramp just to give you an idea of how high this water is and how high it was. You can see the mud line here. The water is receding a little bit, a massive pumping operation taking place just to the west of here. This is so, so critical to Philadelphia. Connects the Schuylkill Expressway to the Ben Franklin Bridge. You can see how high the water is. That's the 21st Street overpass there. The water about halfway up what the normal clearance would be. The Schuylkill River is overflowing its banks and crested earlier this morning at about 17 feet, right now down to about 11 feet. But the National Weather Service says 
it will not be below flood stage until sometime after midnight tonight. That's why the flood emergency remains in place here in Philadelphia until 7 tomorrow morning. We are not out of the danger zone yet, and you can see why Vine Street Expressway would be choked with cars during rush hour, now just filled with water, Wolf. All right, Pete, thank you very much. Pete Montine on the scene for us in Philadelphia. Let's go uh, to the state of emergency in New Jersey right now, where the Governor Phil Murphy is joining us on the phone. Governor, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I know you just announced that at least 23 New Jerseyans uh, have been lost to the storm. Has your state ever, based on everything you know and have experienced yourself, has your state ever experienced anything like this? Wolf, it's pretty historic by any measure. I mean, I think Superstorm Sandy uh, probably, uh, uh, with the toll it took, probably a little bit uh, north of what this storm did. But frankly, as it relates to flooding, no. It's never, it's never flooded like this. It's never rained like this. And, and multiple tornadoes hitting us in a small geographic space is not a normal thing in our state. So this is, by any measure, historic. 